Twitter, Dragons in the Twister. Um, I love you dearly. I'm really sorry I found that. Um, I'm back now with another video, another message as well. Um, the message today is we're going to be called The Wages Are Sin Equals Death. So, the reason why it's called that is a good reason. Um, I am truly going to explain it to you all. But I do want to say Happy New Year to all. It's truly a blessing to be here, to see another year. After all that's been going on, through the pledges and everything that's going on, it's truly a blessing to see another year, uh, to still be breathing. Thank the Lord for it, because without the Lord, we wouldn't even be here to see another minute, another second, another day, and darn sure not another year. So, with that being said, Happy New Year to all, and may God be with you all, and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, truly. Um, but again, this message is, um, the wages of sin equals death. So, and I wanted to go to, of course, we have scriptures to back up what we stand as well. Um, but the first commandment, it, the point, the commandments itself, it points to our sins and that we are in need of a savior. Um, with that being said, our first scripture is going to be Exodus 31. 18 matter of fact so i'm going to get my bible sorry about that ladies and gentlemen all right so i said that was in exodus 31 18 i try to be prepared here so i'd already got it here it said exodus 31 18 all right it says and he gave unto moses then he had an end of communion i'm sorry communion with him upon the Mount Sinai, two tables of testimonies, table of stone. Remember, it's made of stone, written with the finger of God. It was made by God's fingers. It wasn't made by Moses' finger. It wasn't made by Apostle Paul's fingers. It wasn't made by John the Baptist. None of them. It wasn't made by none of their fingers. It was made by God's fingers. Let's first pay attention to that. And let's pay attention to, it was also put on stone. It wasn't put on the paper that's like in our scriptures. It wasn't put on any of that. It wasn't put on any other things that they used back in the day. Um, I believe they called them like the, the scrolls. Um, it wasn't even put on that. It was put on stone. And like they say to this day as a phrase, what's well, set of stone is that set of stone. Ain't no change in that at all. Just like our Father's word. So pay attention to that. So also too, I want to go here to the commandments. It reveals what our sins is. And these are just notes that I wrote down for myself. So I could be like, okay, I'm going to say this on my message because it was something that I was like, it needs to be said. So the commandment reveals what sins is. Sin equals death. Bottom line. Now, if we go to Romans, and also, too, I want to say that it, sins actually separate us from our Father, too. That's another thing to pay attention to, because the more we're sinning, the more we are losing our relationship and our one-on-one -on -one with our Father. Because we're so busy sinning that our Father is righteous, very righteous, and holy. There's no sin with our Father. So as long as we're sinning, our relationship with our Father, and we're separated. We're separating ourselves from our Father, our Creator. Um, in Romans uh, 6, well, I guess I'll go to this. Let me see right quick. Because I got two scriptures in Romans that I actually want to break up today. Um, so I see in Romans here, I want to break up. I guess I would break up. Sorry, brothers and sisters, I'm trying to find that scripture. Romans 3, 20. I just wanted this. Thought I already had it. I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. 3, almost there. And then 20. So, 
Right. It says in Romans 3.20, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Okay? But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Okay, so with this being said, it says that the sins will not be justified at all in the sight of our Father. It's not going to be justified. It's also saying that it's going to be told to everyone and to all by the prophecies, and it's going to be actually witnessed in the law as well. And if you think about the law that we have now to this day, the Ten Commandments itself. The Ten Commandments is you have one of them saying, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Now, if you do those Ten Commandments, like that's part of them, that's two of them. Now, if you do those two, if you think about it, those are part of the law that we have in the world that we're living in. It's against the law. So if you do those things, you're going to jail, you're going to prison. You're going to have to stand before the judge, and the judge is going to tell you what you're saying, what you basically done, the damage you done, and what you caused on yourself, your life was done, or how many years you got to do. Same thing with our father. So pay attention to the sins and pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to the commandments um, of our father, truly, definitely number one. Make sure you're not doing the, the command. The, make sure you're not breaking any of the laws, the sins, the laws that's in the commandments. Um, also, to pay attention to because these are the reasons why they set, even in the world that we in today, the same laws that our Father Jesus have put for us is the same laws that we have here in this world. Interesting. So, also, too, I have another scripture. It's in Romans 6. 23. So let's go to 623. Let's go 623. Here we go. Is that the 623. 623. Hmm. Okay. Well, 623. It says. I'm going to do 22, I'm sorry. And then I do 23. For I do like in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warning against the law of my mind and bringing me into the captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Okay. Now, I don't remember me putting that in there. Is in there for a reason. Um, let's see. So I'm pretty sure that helps someone out too, but that's not the one that I was looking for. I was looking for this one. This is the one. Okay. Sorry about that, brothers and sisters. This is the one I really wanted to read. Okay. This is going to be 6 20 through 23. This is the one I want to read it. Okay. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, Ye have your feud unto holiness and the end of everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So this tells us right here too, clear as day. We can't get no clear than this. First of all, it was saying, For when ye were servants of the sin, ye were free from righteousness. What it's saying, what it's saying by that is, when we serving, when we doing our sins, we're serving not the Father in heaven, but we're serving basically the devil's doing. 
So we're free from righteousness because we don't have the righteous in us at that time. We're sinning. And that's not of God. That's not our Father. So we're free from righteousness because of this reason, which is not a good thing. But it also says, 21, it says, What few had ye then in those things, therefore ye have now ashamed. For the end of those things is death. Now, on 21, you have noticed because you have walked with, you started thinking about God and you started putting your life right and more with Christ than your sins. This is where it says that what fruit ye had then, you had the devil fruits in you then because you were sinning. It says, now you are ashamed of those because now you know right from wrong. So now you are ashamed of those sins and for the, those that, so that was death. You know that that was going to be ending in death. So you stop in those sins. Okay, and it says, but now being made free from sin, because you like born again. You born with the blood and the water of our Father, the blood of Jesus, cleanse you. So, actually it says that, but now being made free from sin, no longer sin, you know, sinful person, and becoming a servant to God, you start doing God's work, you start doing God's will, you stop your old life and become a new person that by like baptism as well ye have your feet into holiness like i said you start doing father's work and you start thinking about god and the end of everlasting life you end up with an everlasting life instead of the death which is what sin is the death sin equals death the wages of sin is death okay and a 23 says for our wages of sin is death is death sin equals death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord the only way that you actually get eternal everlasting life is only one way and that's through jesus christ our lord that's it there is no other way to have eternal life one way it's only one way to get to the father Jesus. So that's that. Um, I also wanted to say some other stuff as well. Um, if you cannot see your sins, then you can't see that you're in need of a savior. That's not a good thing because our Father done what he done on the cross for us in Calvary for our sins. So we can be be forgiven for our sins. But if you can't see that you're sinning, then you won't even see that you need someone to save you. Or you won't understand what our Father done on the cross. Because what he done was to save us so we can have everlasting life. Have a chance to have everlasting life. To be able to repent for our sins. To still be able to make it into heaven. You wouldn't understand that. Because you don't even see that you needed a Savior. Because in your eyes, hey, I'm not doing nothing wrong. So... As long as you see it that way, you're not going to see you need a Savior. Okay. And Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Let's see what that says. I should have that already there. That's not it. Ephesians 2, where is it? 2, 8, 9. Okay. There it goes. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not, okay, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, ye any man should boast. Okay, let's see. And it says, but we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, not bad works, not sin, but good works to do our Father's works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. He showed us how to walk, how to talk. He showed us how to do all that stuff we supposed to be doing when Jesus was here. 
we're supposed to be role models of our father. Okay? So that goes to let us know that we are only saved because of what our father done for us. We are saved by grace. Grace is what we saved by. We are saved by grace. Are ye saved by faith? For by the grace are ye saved by faith. Because our father loved us so much and still does that he did this for us. For to forgive us for our sins because our father is so holy and so justice that it was no other way. His law is law. No breaking his law. That's why it was set in stone. You'll never be able to change our father's law, period. Just like I saw one of the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments. Now, that should not commit adultery. Now, if you look at the world that we in, adultery is so fine and it's okay and it's the norm and it's the life. It's not. Our father is against this and our father is against that. Pay attention to the Ten Commandments. Our father set this in stone for a reason. We are not to break it. We are not to break it and we are not to change it. Because it's not for us to change. We didn't create this world. We didn't create ourselves. We're not creators of anything. Nothing. So, with that being said, I'm going to go on. I got some more notes here. Hold the prophecies. Hey, I seen a show, a message that you done. Loved it. I had to put it in this one as well. Some of what you said. Um, just to give a breakdown because I love how you broke that down. So, shout out to Hold the Prophecies. He said it. And he broke it down. I'm going to tell you how he broke it down. He said, he said it best. He says, our sins are like when we put dirt on our face. But we can't see it until we look in a mirror. Okay. Now, if you think about that, that's just like when we think, when we look and we have started putting our lives in God's life. Like we start changing our old ways to our new ways. So we start Looking at how our father will look at things. That's why it says, when we look in the mirror, we see the dirt on our face. When we look in the mirror, we get with Christ, we start seeing how our sins are not right. Okay? Same thing. Okay, so it says, we look in the mirror of the law of God, and we see the sins when you know God. Okay, so question. Can the mirror clean the dirt off your face? It truly can. Law cannot save us, okay? It says, only say to remember grace through faith. You can't clean the mirror, a mirror with another mirror. And also, no, well, there's no cleaning the mirror with a mirror. That's what that said. All right. And it says, you have to get, boy, you end up getting soap and water to clean your face. But it's just like when you're also with our Father. It says to clean your face. It says the dirt, get the dirt off your face, just, just like the law of God. You cleanse your face, but relieves. But when you actually clean your face, if you think about that, you clean your face with soap and water. It's just like when we with our father, we clean, we notice our sin, we start seeing our sin, we repent for our sin, and we never do the sin again. We try to be as much as our father as possible. Um, and also with that, um, you cleanse your face, and with the blood of water, with the blood of Jesus and the water, remember when he was pierced, he was pierced on his side. And blood and water came out. Just like when you baptize, you you actually baptized in water. So, you know, with that being said, you cleansed. You made new by water, you know. So, that actually is something to look at. Um, let's see here. I also have Jesus is the water of life that can cleanse all the dirt of our face and he can save us. He's our only savior. He's our only hope. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'll start till I got this also. It says Examine yourself. I also have something about Isaiah 40, 25 through 26, if you want to look at that too. It says, Examine yourself. Do you live your life as much as you can like Christ? 
this is a really good question because it will let you know if you are living your life like Christ and you're not sinning, are you being obedient to our Father's word? All this is important. Um, it says, do you even try to even care? Because a lot of people don't. Um, I'm like a believer that walks by faith, they open their eyes up to basically to love the fact that our Father corrects us. He corrects us all the time. When we are actually children of God, He shows you, you're doing that wrong. You looked at that wrong. You didn't do that right. You need to fix that. That's not right. Our Father corrects us every time. And you have to love correction. You have to love to know that and be able to accept you wrong. That's my mom. Because our Father will let us know, no, that, that wasn't right. And we repent from it. We go back to our Father. Father, I'm sorry. I repent. Please show me your way. I need your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding. We need it. We we had we have to have that because other than that, we're not gonna get it. Um, so we have to pray that we just be like him as much as possible. And mean it from all and that did not have all your heart, mind and soul. Every bit of it. Okay. Okay, do ask yourself, do my ashes match my faith? Hmm. Okay, the words match to the word of God. The words that come out your mouth, is it matching the words of God or is it matching you on your own level? You know, like some of us, it'll be one way when it comes to when we talk about God and we're in church and then we turn around and get out, we're a whole nother person. We cuss and drink and smoke. It's a whole nother thing. It's a whole nother person. Split person. That way, y'all so like, what the crap? Who is this person, you know? It's crazy. Um, let's see. Do I do I research the Bible verses? Um, but when it comes to putting them in my prep in my life, when I need to practice the Bible verses in my life, do I put them to practice or do I follow them? We all have times and trials and tribulations in our life, but it says in scripture on everything that we go through, it's a passage that explains how we should handle them. So we actually have to ask ourselves, are we practicing what's in the Bible when we go through things? Or are we handling it the way we want to handle it? It is a difference. Um, let's see. Let's see. It says God will correct you more and more. Um, you would see to what well, yeah, as I just said, as you become more of a child of God, you start to see how much God will correct you and how much you are wrong and you repent and you thank God for it again. Um, for our God is holy, no lukewarm can't be lukewarm. You you either for the world or you for our father. It's not in between. Um there's no in between at all. We, you don't for a father or you for the devil. Like now, it's New Year's. People gonna be drinking, smoking, partying, and hanging out. How many people can we honestly say? Some people probably bring it out and bring it in a church. But how many people can we honestly say that actually taking the time out to just thank the Lord and praise the Lord to see and to be able to be like, thank you, Jesus. It's a, this is about him. It's not about us. It's about him. So how many of us is really doing that? Celebrating our father. Give him a praise. <laughs> how about that? That would be great. All right. When the devil tries to command you to, you can resist the devil and the devil will flee. This is a true statement. The devil will flee. Stand strong and pray to up for God. And God is our strength. The devil, well, God is our strength and our help. We need God for that. The devil is the opposite. The devil makes you feel low and depressed. So if you're going through any of that low depressed feeling or you feel like, oh, this is another year or this year has been chaotic or you shot yourself, killed yourself, who the heck knows? You feeling depressed and low? It's not of our Father God. It's the devil. So you need to come and stay prayed up. Get your strength. Get your strength. Because God is our strength. He's our savior. He's our rock. He's our salvation. He's our creator. And let's see. If you intend, if you fall back into 
you know, doing your sin that you was doing because we sometimes fall. And sometimes we have setbacks and we fall into these old sins that we committing or new sins. And then, you know, we must repent. We have to repent and come back to our Father for that. Because as long as we breathe in, we have to understand that we can repent. Come back to our Father. Pray to the Lord with all our heart. And never do that sin again. Um, it also says, and just... Okay, justify you. Don't justify it because when you try to justify sin and bad stuff that you that's wrong in your life, you headed down the road to where the devil is starting to get you in the head to where I'm not sinning. I'm just living life. Or this is not a sin. You know, like the devil is starting to really get to you. And once that happens, God will actually start taking his hands off upon you. And he will let you do. And whatever choice you make, that's the choice you will make. But again, understand, sin equals death. Understand that. There is a battle for our souls. We're in a battle, period. We're in a battle for either we're going to be for our Father, like I said before, in heaven. Or either we're going to be for the devil. And we're going to do sin and then you're going to hell, basically. There is no sugar cold, nothing. It is it's time, it's about to be 2022. Time to be blunt, just like this world has been blunt, and how they don't care about if they show the devil stuff, if they, however they present the devil, they're doing it. So it's time for us as children of our Father, of our Most High. It's time for us to be blunt, too. It's time for us to actually show and to be straight honest with these people and no cupcaking what our father is saying. We have to understand that this is the time now and our time is at hand. The time is at hand. The time really is at hand. And we got to understand that you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. It is no in between like the Jehovah's think. There's no such thing. I think they call it promontory. No such thing. Either heaven or hell. You have the choice to make as long as you're still breathing. So, which one is your choice going to be? Um, let's see. Now, I wrote here. As long as you're breathing, you have a choice to make. You either live for Christ, put Christ first, for he is the way... Well, yeah, but he is the way, the truth, and the life. So if you're going any other direction, it is death. And you will not get your crown. A life which is with Christ and God, our Father, the Savior. So if you are doing any of this, you won't see your crown. You won't even make it to heaven. You're done. You're doomed forever. That's life. And I read scripture to break that down to even tell people to understand that this is it. You either for our father or you for the devil. Your works will not get you to heaven. Your personality or how you look won't get you to heaven. No matter how much money or no matter what you got in life, the car you drive, the house you live in, none of this gets you to heaven. None of this. So, how much are we really there for our brothers and sisters? Ask ourselves that too. How often do we help our brothers and sisters? How much do we encourage? That's also help. It ain't just always money. Our brothers and sisters. How much do we actually take time out to actually study our Father's Word? How much do time do we give to our father? How much do we thank our father for creating us, for our health, for us still being here to be able to witness the things that we are witnessing? How much time or how much effort are we putting into this? And be honest, because at the end, 
It's all gonna come out anyway. What's in the dark comes to the light. Everything. Nothing will be left in the dark. So, I'm not gonna hold this much longer. I do want to just, just put this message out because the rule now has turned the good to bad and the bad to good. Understand, my brothers and sisters, please, please understand this. Because time is so, 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 so at hand. Oh, brothers and sisters. If you have ears to hear, let them hear. If you have eyes to see, let them see. Father Lord Jesus, that this, we have to get right. We have to get it right. I pray for all my brothers and sisters, Father Lord Jesus, that this message hits home and hits someone. Even if it's just one person, hit someone that needs to see this, that they they repent and they come to you and that they praise you and just be your treasure like we meant to be, like we're here to do. We're here for you. Not that you need us. We need you. And we have to have you, Lord. So I just pray for all my brothers and sisters that this be another year that we put you first. And if we wasn't doing it before, that they start, we start putting you first before any of this other stuff, before we, our own life stuff. But our Father, our Father. So, brothers and sisters, I pray that um, you understand, if you didn't understand before, how serious sin is. Please don't listen to this world. This world is lying to all of us. These sins that we are committing is going to lead to death. So please stop them. Please come to Christ. Please change your ways. Please change your thinking, your train of thought. Please, if you want that track, please get off of it. Because like it said in the scripture, the road to hell is going to be wide. A lot of people is going to be falling down into that. And then it also says the road to heaven is narrow. Only a few, a few will find it. That it says a lot by itself. Because a lot of us is not seeing this for what it needs to be seen as. A lot of us is taking life and everything as a joke. We didn't create our life. So we have no right to take our life. We have no right to take no one life because we didn't create life, period. Period. Our Father created our lives. He created us for a reason. So we must thank our Father and love Him with all. I do mean every last bit of us. My heart, body, soul, spirit must be with our Father. A father got to be number one. Live your life for our father. Change the wicked, old, simple ways. Don't bring in no new sins, any of that. Get born again. Repent. Surrender. And praise our father. Praise him. Because he's here for us. But he's not going to always be there. It's coming a time that he's not going to be here. And it's going to be too late. So I pray for all my brothers and sisters, please. Repent, stop your sins. Sins equals death. Our Father, God in heaven equals when you do the right thing, when you do holiness, it equals everlasting life. So there's your difference. Sin equals death. Righteousness equals everlasting life. There's the sum it up. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, I love y'all. I just wanted to put this out here because I love you all. And I pray that we get this together and get this right. Get this walk right. It's, it means everything. Everything. I, everlasting life. Everything. Because this is temporary. None of this... It's going to be forever. So.
please get this walk right. Brothers and sisters, children, please just give with our Father and build a relationship with our Father. But I love you all. Um, stay prayed up. Put our Father first. Understand sin equals death. Holiness equals what? Everlasting life. Crown. Crown. And that's only from our Father. There is no other way to get it. The way, the truth, and the life. He said that for a reason. He is the way. We do his ways. He's the truth because the world lied to us so much. He is life because if you walk in and you go in another direction, which is sin, you, that's death. But our Father was just holiness, everlasting life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, oh, that was so amazing. Okay, so Lord, thank you. Thank you for that confirmation. I just, yeah, I love it. Okay. So, yes, brothers and sisters, that's awesome. I love y'all. I love you, love you, love you so, so much. And I just pray for everyone. Happy New Year's to all again. Um, stay prayed up. Praise the Lord. Put God first. Thank our Father for sin another year. Give him all the praise and glory. Give it to our Father. Because he is who we celebrate. And not none of this on this earth. And not none of this sinful stuff on this earth. But our Father who is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. To see another year. And in Jesus' name, we pray, we pray, we pray. Amen to our Father. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Have a blessed one. And I'll see y'all next year, 2022. Bye-bye. <laughs> Love y'all.